Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my serious conference. Please welcome Sebastian Bergman, who will talk about uh, testing something that uh, is uh, wanted by everyone, but not everyone is willing to do. Thanks. Thank you, Sebastian. Good morning. I can probably almost skip um, this introductory slide because the center was trying to introduce me. Um, some quick notes about myself. In a week from today, I will be 30. Some people say you're going to be very old, to be very big. I don't know. I hope not. Um, for about eight years now, I have been involved in the PHP project, which started very simple by translating the documentation from English to German, then I found bugs in the English documentation, so I fixed bugs there, then I found bugs in PHP, helped with something there, then we started um, to design um, and model what would later become PHP 5, so I gave some input there, designed some parts of the object model, the reflection API, and what the model there, so on and so forth. Um, at some point, in 2001, if I remember correctly, I came across uh, JUnit at university, and I wanted to have something like JUnit for PHP. Um, there was a PHP unit project on SourceForge that is unfortunately still listed on SourceForge, and due to some page rank magic, it still ser um, turns up at the number one result if you Google for PHP unit, but the project is dead since um, 2000. Um, it was written for PHP 3, it never really worked as PHP 4. I keep getting bug reports by email from people, why are you going to conferences talking about the software? It has been dead for eight years and it doesn't work, and blah, blah, blah. I'm not involved in that project. The project I'm talking about today is my PHP unit, which is hosted on phpunit.de. Um, of course, I have to make make a living somehow, and I do this by going into companies, enterprises, helping them, uh, getting started with quality assurance for their PHP-based web projects. Um, these are companies like uh, ticketing companies that build ticketing systems, or banks that do Basel II credit rating, credit ranking, um, this PHP is MySQL, and they use PHP unit for their unit which is a, um, a lot of fun, but even more fun is to work in PHP unit and tell people about uh, what they can do with PHP unit. So I'm at, at the MySQL conference here today, so the focus of this talk will be, um, at least in the second half, on, on how yeah, to leverage PHP unit and its DB unit component to effectively test PHP MySQL web Um, enough about me. I am curious about who is sitting in this room. I'm always happy to see so many people that are interested um, in testing software, testing PHP, and so on. But who are you? Um, so you already know this game probably from yesterday, um, from the tutorials, the raise your hand game. Um, so what's your experience with PHP 5? So who is here using PHP 5? Um, quick check, who is still using PHP 4? You have until August 8th, um, so <laughs> <laughs> you might want to start uh, with your migration. It can be tricky in, uh, in some situations, but uh, the general case is very easy to get from PHP 4 to PHP 5. And you get, um, by now you get around 40% performance um, increase just from moving your application from PHP 4 to PHP 5, because these engines are so much better. Um, quick raise of hands, who is using, or is, who is familiar with object the program? Right. Um, who is familiar with testing? <laughs> who is testing their PHP applications? Okay. Who knows that it should be testing their PHP applications? Okay. <laughs> now everybody raise their hand, that's, that's okay. Um, who has heard of PHP unit or is using PHP unit? Good. Um, who knows that PHP unit has, um, I think for almost a year now, a specialized component for database um, testing for DB unit. Nobody. Oh, one or two? Okay. Um, so, 
Yeah, this is basically what I'm talking about today. A little bit more about the history of CPU units and how come to work. So why test? Um, when I started working on PHP units, I was excited about it. I wanted to write it. I wanted to work with it. I wanted to write my PHP code um, as unit tests because this is what I learned from university. You know? And I thought it's a, it's a brilliant idea to do this. Back then, in the PHP community, nobody else cared about tests. When I first presented at a conference about PHP units, which was about 2002-ish, um, three or four people showed up in the room about the same size as this one. And two later admitted that, it, that they were only there because none of the other tracks that were going on at the same time interested them. So they were just doing it in the room, checking their email, doing something else. They were not that actually interested in that. This, thank God, has changed. Uh, last year at Zen conference in Zenor, about 300 people in a full day tutorial on PHP and getting started. This is the, the tool and just the processes and the philosophy behind to do the test. So now that we know how to build PHP applications in a secure way, in a fast way, in a scalable way, people finally come to realize that they also need to um, care about quality assurance. Testing the application, making sure it works, now when you can develop it, that it works when you deploy it, and that it works, still works a year or two after the initial deployment, that they can keep control over that project from the beginning, from the design phase, development phase, and well into the deployment and maintain, uh, maintenance mode. Mm -hmm. And the sister project of PHP unit deals with exactly this topic, which is called PHP under control. So companies develop more and more enterprise critical applications with PHP. This is one of the reasons why eight years ago not so many people were interested in PHP and in testing PHP applications. Back then it was mostly PHP was mostly used for building some sort of dynamic websites um, for companies with a guest book, with a forum, whatever small dynamic functions that it needed. It was, PHP was not at the core of the enterprise. It was not uh, involved in their money-making process. So when the website was down for an hour or two, it was not a, not a big of a problem. It might have been an image problem because the website is down, but there was no immediate um, monetary um, drawback for the website being down. Nowadays, if you, have, if you are an airline and you are selling all your tickets, not only the ones that you sell through the web interface that everyone can go to and buy tickets to fly from somewhere to somewhere else. But the, this, the same application written in PHP is also used by every travel agent in the world via internet. And this um, application goes down. You are not selling tickets. You are not making money. And this is, um, is where people start to feel the pain of um, bad design software and bugs and whatnot. So, PHP is used now in enterprise critical applications such as this, it's used as banks, and you probably, you know, you hope that these applications work correctly all the time. And tests help to make sure that they actually do work correctly. So, unit testing by itself became um, very popular uh, in the Java community <coughs> in the middle, uh, in the mid-90s. JUnit was released, it was the brainchild of um, Ken Beck and Eric Gamma, who were flying from Zurich to Atlanta for the Uppsala conference. Um, Java was pretty new at the time. Ken Beck wanted to learn Java. He already had developed SUnit for Smalltalk, and Eric Gamma um, was already very crazy about Java. He had Java on his laptop, but he wanted something like SUnit for Java. So they, the two of them sat together. They used the time um, that it took from uh, getting from Zurich to Atlanta to develop the first version of JUnit. And they showed it around uh, at Uppsala. Martin Fowler picked up and the rest of it is history. So ever since then, there has been um, this gut feeling in the testing community that we are doing the right thing. Um, we are um, spending less time on debugging later on just because we invest some more time while developing um, in writing tests. And everybody developer more or less is already doing tests in some form or another while he is um, developing the software. 
The problem with this is if you're not doing unit testing, for instance, is that you don't keep these tests. So, um, you write a short snippet of code to test does the method that I just wrote um, do what it's supposed to do? And you say, okay, it does it. Um, I delete the test and I'll keep it. So the next day when you add some other functionality to the system, you can actually break what worked before and you don't have the old test anymore. So doing unit tests is nothing um, yeah, fundamentally different what you're already doing. It's just doing it in a more organized way and keeping all the tests that you write as a developer along the way. So every time you add some new functionality, you can roll run all the tests that you wrote before and see if you broke something by adding a few functionality. So a lot of yeah, research and tools are currently, um, is currently performed and implemented um, in the Google testing labs. And the Google guys came up with this um, mantra of debugging sucks, testing the box. And somebody, maybe Google also has a chief cartoon officer, not just like mine, still has this uh, Giuseppe. Um, they <coughs> At this brilliantly, I did this brilliant idea of making these um, yeah, light bulbs, the one with the head and face and the other one. Well, this is just the, um, yeah, the summary of this gut feeling that you're doing the right thing. And in the last two, three years, there have been um, academic publications um, from long-term long studies and um, case studies from companies such as Microsoft or Ericsson uh, and other big companies that have switched part of their developers from the traditional waterfall model like software development process where the developers don't write tests at all. And some months, years later, somebody else tests. Um, in the worst case, the users. Uh, so now we have actually proof that this gut feeling is right. So what needs testing? Um, in the, uh, in the web application, excuse me, you usually have um, at least these two layers. You have a back end where your business logic happens. So if you're a bank, this is where your basic tool for your creating um, algorithms do, uh, do their job. If you're an airline, this is where the seat reservation takes place and so on. And beneath the business logic, we have the database layer. And you have reusable components, components that you use um, in multiple projects that you reuse, really um, the original meaning of reusable components that were promised by object of our programming a while ago. And usually, or hopefully, these reusable components are third-party components. Why? We'll come to that uh, in just a bit. And then we have the front end, and the front end in that applications used to be very simple which makes uh, the front ends of web applications very simple to test. So back when we only had static HTML, no JavaScript, no nothing, you could just um, do an HTTP request to a, to a URL, post some uh, post variables or send some get uh, parameters via HTTP, collect the HTML that comes over the wire, and do some regular expressions, for instance, on this HTML and see whether or not the test um, succeeds or not. Nowadays, we have rich interfaces with Ajax, with JSON, with whatever new technology uh, is uh, <coughs> this week. And it's really not that simple to test anymore. So when um, these rich interfaces um, first came up, people thought, OK, there's JavaScript in there. Um, some, of the, some parts of the JavaScript I can test by itself. This is um, where JS unit, for instance, comes into play. You have JavaScript libraries that you can test with something like JS unit. But um, some parts of the JavaScript happen or make only sense in the browser, so you have to test it in the browser. People started then writing JavaScript interpreters and browser emulators in Java. This is one of the first plugins that came along for JUnit, and some guy was. Um, very bored, I guess, because he wrote a JavaScript interpreter uh, in PHP 5 to test JavaScript within the PHP process, which is a nice research project, in my opinion, but not very practical. Mm -hmm. um, the other side is also not very practical, in my opinion, because 
you want to test the JavaScript where it's executed by the, uh, the user itself, which is in a real browser. And this is where things get interesting, because as you all know, uh, every browser interprets JavaScript differently. Uh, so you want to test it, uh, using the real thing, and there are tools for that. Um, and of course, what happens in the browser is not our only window anymore <coughs> into what happens on the back end. There are other APIs, if you want, um, to the back end logic. So there are feeds, web services, <coughs> and so on, and you also need to test these. So how do we test it? Um, for the back end, um, we can continue using uh, the traditional functional testing, for instance, using unit tests that we already know, or that the testing community already knew from testing traditional applications. Um, reusable components, and this is what I uh, alluded to before, um, should be um, external components for two reasons. One is you do not want to reinvent the wheel just because um, somebody else already wrote a perfect template engine or a better web abstraction layer or whatever, or a workflow engine. You do not have to write your own just to be different. Use what is out there. That's the brilliance of open source. You take the components that you need and just implement uh, the parts that are missing. And these external components usually nowadays come with their own set of unit tests. So this is a big shift in the PHP community with the release of PHP 5. Not only were tools such as PHP Unit available um, and mature with the release of PHP 5, but open source projects such as Zen Framework, Easy Components, Propel, um, Symphony, and so on and so forth, picked up on the methodology <coughs> and implemented stuff test driven and have unit tests that you can run and can verify, yes, this works perfectly in my platform. And then a new version comes out, you can run the old test and say, okay, my application still works fine. There is no backup compatibility issue or regression or whatever. And you have the confidence of the test. For the front end, you have um, tests, such as acceptance tests or system tests, which are basically, physically, on the code level, the same tests. But when you interpret them, the results, they serve different purposes. So acceptance tests are usually your um, requirements, your user stories, your use case that you get from your customer. Like when I go to this web page and I add an item to my shopping cart and I go to check out, I want this and this and this to happen. And you want to write a test for that. Um, another view on the same test is, okay, I have all tested all these um, different components I have on the back end, for instance, the shopping cart, the payment system, and I know from my unit tests that isolated by themselves, they all work correctly. But just, that doesn't mean uh, that they also work correctly when they're integrated with each other, when they talk, have to talk to each other. So, this is um, system testing. Then. And these tests, you want these tests to run in the browser, in the real software that your users um, use to access your site. You do not want the browser emulator you do not want a JavaScript emulator or whatever. You want it to be the real thing. Otherwise, you do not know when the test fails. Okay, does the test fail because my browser emulator is limited or because there's an actual bug? You have always used the browser's uncertainty. Feeds, web services, etc., can be tested using unit tests. You just have to um, wrap your mind around uh, the fact that um, you're still doing unit testing. You just don't care that the unit that you are testing against might be on a different system. And you are doing remote procedure calls to exercise the code on a different server. The same test that we have used for acceptance tests and system tests, you can also use for um, compatibility tests. So you write a test once and or run it not only on one specific browser, on one specific operating system, just because my web application works fine with Firefox on my Linux notebook here, doesn't necessarily mean that it works fine with Safari on Windows. Not that you want to use Safari on Windows, but anyway, or with Internet Explorer or whatever. So it's really easy with tools, tools such as Selenium Remote Control to set up a pool 
of um, machines that run different operating systems, different um, browsers. You fire up one test and it gets executed on all the different machines and you get the aggregated results back. And depending on how much effort you put into building up your infrastructure, you even get videos um, and a test fails from what actually happened in the browser. So a developer that has no physical access to a Mac OS X machine in Safari um, can see what um, went, uh, what, what happened in the browser when the test ran. And he might get a better idea of um, how to fix this one. Or maybe it's not a, not a bug in the software, but a bug in the browser. And to some degree, you can reuse the test again for performance testing. You can exercise your web application with real uh, user transactions. You can multiply them, run them in parallel, uh, massively parallel, and see how your system behaves. Instead of just using a dumb <coughs> tool, just uh, such as AB, <coughs> the patch benchmark tool, and you say, here's a new URL, request this URL 100,000 times, and 100 times are uh, in 100 parallel connections. Um, that might work for the, um, your front page, your starting page of the web <coughs> to see how the performance is there, but it doesn't really work for um, complex workflows on your website that um, span multiple page requests. So testing software usually falls down into um, yeah, three categories, component tests, system tests, non-functional tests. Um, I already explained that along the way. There is a different way of um, yeah, looking at, at um, so, uh, testing software, you have the developer tests um, that ensure that the code works correctly. These are the tests that the developers should write, and some of the more modern um, software development processes, um, like Extreme Program, demand that the developers write these tests. Um, and then there are acceptance tests that ensure that the code does what the customer wants. Just because it works correctly it doesn't necessarily mean that um, it's a <coughs> To make testing viable, oops, um, tool support is needed. This is where a testing framework such as PHP Unit comes into play. If you could write a wish list um, for such a testing framework, it would, in most cases, uh, look like this. It should be a reusable test framework just because you start a new project. You do not want um, to write a new test framework from scratch. Actually, you probably don't want to write a testing framework yourself. You want some, to take something that's already there. Um, strict separation of production code and test code. Um, you want to keep these separate, for instance, because you normally won't, don't want to ship your tests when you go into production. The tests have nothing to do on, on the deployment server, but on the test server. So a physical separation of the code that is tested and the test um, is a good thing. Execution of test code should be uh, as convenient and as automatic as possible. Um, finally, we have IDEs for PHP where you can click a button and it runs your test and it reports inside the IDE where a test fails. Um, or you want something like PHP under control, which is a server that sits some, somewhere on your internet, knows where your subversion repository is or your CDS repository or whatever. Uh, it checks out each new revision, runs the test and reports by email, by SMS, by Java Messenger, um, just uh, when the test starts failing. And it keeps all this information over time and makes it really easy to access um, quality assurance uh, information of the project. So developers can get information from this. Uh, project managers can see what the current state of the project is and the customer can see, okay, this is my bird's eye view, we are in between, everything is good. Um, the last point uh, is of psychological nature. A testing tool should be easy to learn to use and easy to use. If it's hard to learn, uh, it creates a barrier of entry to developers because they have to learn yet another technology. And if, if, if it's not easy, they might not be motivated to learn it. And it should be easy to use. Um, it's finally easy with uh, two weeks of speech data control and new IDEs like Zen Studio or um, PHP Edit, or somebody wrote um, a plugin for them, so you can run your PHP unit test from inside BI and get the results. It should um, fit the developer's needs and it should be easy to use. Yeah. So what tools are there? 
only at the unit test level you are bound to tools written in the same language um, than the tested code. Uh, for PHP, me uh, this means um, there's PHP units and simple test. Simple test finally works with PHP 5 as of a couple of weeks ago. Um, so let's finally petition again for PHP units, which is good. Um, system test, you're not bound to the uh, programming language anymore and you can either spend huge amounts of money on um, yeah, in six figures scale on commercial tools for web application testing, for front end testing, or you can use Selenium, which is open source. Um, and so far I haven't found anything that I couldn't do with Selenium. And Selenium integrates perfectly with PHP units. You can write your front end test in PHP or you can use the Selenium IDE, which use recorded playback. Um, there's a Firefox plugin, you go to your website, you click the report button. Can you talk about the potential problems with SSL testing and Selenium RC? Um, that's a bit outside of the scope of this, I mean, this film thing, but I want to get to the video unit later. But we, um, we can talk about this afterwards. The question was about uh, problems with uh, SSL connections and uh, using Selenium RC. Sebastian, are there, uh, is there a Selenium-like uh, product for uh, the other uh, Class A browsers like uh, Safari and IE? Selenium RC can uh, run the tests inside all of the major browsers. Oh. Like Internet Explorer 5, 6, and 7, there's already um, alpha support for Internet Explorer 8. Mozilla, where all, all Mozilla Firefox versions, Safari, Opera, Conqueror, whatever. It's only that um, so far there's only a plugin for Firefox to record the tests. Once you have recorded them or written them manually, uh, you can run them in any browser. Um, as you can see, for non-functional tests, um, the, bar, the yeah, number of tools that you can choose from uh, becomes uh, bigger for performance loads, stress availability, availability testing, and so on. Um, we have tools that start very simple with AB, shipped forever with the HTTP server from Apache, um, to yeah, all in one one stop solutions such as JMeter, which is also open source. Uh, the J gives it away, it's written in Java, it comes with a nice GUI, um, can record the test there and play them back massively parallel and see a new service that's breaking. Um, to some degree, you can do automatic testing for um, security vulnerabilities in their applications. There's um, only one tool available, to my knowledge, that uh, is available to, to, um, yeah, to buy, and it's uh, Chorizo. There are fortunately no open source tools for that, because that would be like Christmas and Easter and birthday or, and everything else for script keys all over the world because you just could use a, um, a ready solution um, and start looking for security vulnerabilities on other sites. Um, Chorizo works for any web application, but you get additional benefits if your web application is written in PHP, because as it comes with a PHP extension that communicates um, with the testing software, and when Chorizo found, finds a bug in uh, a security issue in your, in your PHP application, it tells you exactly where the root of the security vulnerability is in the <coughs> So it's pretty neat. Um, PHP unit. Um, like I told you earlier, it's the PHP unit is hosted on phpunit.de or as of a couple of weeks ago, I also have an Italian domain. It seems to be kind of hip to get to uh, domain names that yeah, look like this. I think it's sort of just delicious at some point. So now there's PHP unit as a domain name. Um, yeah, it's a test framework. It's, an, uh, it's uh, in the tradition of the XUnit family of test frameworks that was founded by XUnit for Smalltalk. became popular with uh, JUnit. Nowadays there's CUnit, CBP unit, PI unit, per unit, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it supports mock objects um, and has DB unit as an extension to easily express database for the test. 
it integrate, integrates nicely with other tools um, for quality assurance, for instance, PHP under control, Selenium RC. And most of this integration comes from the fact that all the XML block files, for instance, that PHP unit can produce follow standards from the Java community. So, Truth Control, which sits underneath PHP under control, just sees an XML log file that looks um, to Truth Control like a JUnit XML log file. And it knows what to do with this log file. Uh, the benefits of open standards. Um, yeah, and there's even more cool stuff, uh, some of which, may, if I have uh, still time at the end, I'm going to at least show um, the code coverage. There's also something um, called uh, project mass detection, so it can tell you where they are where your project is messy. Um, always fun to um, use that on the first day when I'm uh, at a consulting customer, and I look at the large code base, uh, for instance, uh, three weeks ago, 900,000 lines of PHP code in a scroll over 10 years. Um, okay, it took the tool that's behind this about 45 minutes to analyze the code, but then I got a great overview uh, where the hotspots are and we should start with writing the tests. Um, where we should maybe refactor at some point. Um, yeah, cool stuff. Uh, installing PHP unit is very easy. Um, ever since PHP 4.2, um, we shipped the pair installer. Um, which is a yeah, command line utility that you can use to uh, install components. Um, reusable PHP components, it used to be only um, components from the pair <coughs> repository itself, which sits at pair.php.net. But uh, as of a couple of years ago, everyone can create their own pair channel server. So open source projects like PHP Unit, uh, Propel, Thing, and so on, they all have their own pair channel server. You make <coughs> this channel server known to your pair installation once, which you do by pair channel discover pair of PHP unit of the E. Yes, um, <coughs> Can you install it uh, in some other way, like uh, uh, edit, uh, get, uh, things like that? Um, yes, you can. You can just download the tarball uh, and unpack it and use it. But this is the, uh, the, the most common way to use because it also gives you um, automatic upgrades and so on. And you want it out and you want that. So it's easy to automate, um, to keep up with it. Okay, thanks. And then you just say pair install PHP unit slash PHP unit. Please, please, please don't just write pair install PHP unit. That will give you a three year old version of. PHP unit from pair.php.net. Um, yeah, PHP unit used to be hosted inside pair. Um, <coughs> some time ago, I moved out of pair for some specific reasons. Please don't uh, let me get into the specific reasons. Um, do it like this. <coughs> uh, first example, PHP does it. Or we're going to write text for PHP class that represents a bank account. Um, it starts very, very simple, um, and you already see two conventions here that are important uh, this PHP unit. <laughs> um, text for a class bank account go into a class called bank account text. This is a convention that you can follow and should follow, but you do not have to follow it. Um, it makes it easier for third-party tools such as IDEs to know where the tests for the class that you're currently editing are located. So an IDE could, for instance, while you're editing the bank account um, class, um, in the background run the tests from the bank account test class because it knows by convention <coughs> this is the Then it can tell you, hey, in the last five seconds you broke something. Uh, and unless your short-term memory is really, really, really bad, you know what you did the last five seconds and you can fix it immediately. Yes. And a uh, bug never gets committed and so on. Um, another convention is, most of the cases, your tests go into a class that extends PHP in terms of test case. Um, we will see um, the database test case class later, which is an extension of this that specializes for database test case. A single test goes into a public method um, 
that has that, uh, the name of which starts with the prefix test. Again, this is a convention that you can follow. You do not have to follow it. Um, if you decide not to follow it, um, you have to tell PHP unit that this is a test method by using a test annotation. Um, so we test that the balance of a bank account is initially zero, and we do this by creating a new bank account object and um, using the so-called assertion method to assert that the return value of the get balance method is equal to zero. And there's a, a strict convention with all these assertion methods uh, in PHP unit. <coughs> the first argument is always the value that you expect. And the second argument is the actual value that's um, in this case calculated by or returned by the get balance method. And you can have an additional argument um, which is a string. It's optional. If you provide a string, the string will be printed or show up in an XML log file or whatever when the test breaks. And this is to help um, the reader of uh, the test log. Well, the test, the test broke, and this is why. So we can transport additional information. So if you have multiple tests that all require a new uh, bank account object, you can make use of PHP units uh, set up and tear down mechanism. Um, you have the setup method that is called before each test, and you can make your um, test method, individual test methods uh, easier, more easy to read by removing code duplication. There are some other tests, um, not going into much detail there. So the contract for this bank account job is that if you create a new bank account, the balance is zero, and whatever you do with the bank account object, the balance can never become negative. Um, so try to make the, um, in this test, uh, to try to make the balance negative by trying to withdraw money from an empty bank account and hopefully you get the expected bank account exception <coughs> and have some more convenient um, yeah, ways to express uh, yeah, that you expect uh, a test to, um, for, uh, for, for an exception, but I'm not going into, into so many details there. So and at some point, you just go to the command line, type PHP unit bank account test. And now all these conventions that you hopefully followed um, um, bear fruit. So what PHP unit does here, it looks uh, inside the current direct working directory for a class, uh, for a file bank account test.php. It finds it, it opens it, it expects a bank account test class in there. And this bank account test class either extends some, uh, some other class like uh, framework test case, and it knows how to find a test and execute them, uh, the test, or it, expect, uh, it expects this class to have a public static method called suite, and the suite returns a test suite object and it knows how to execute all the tests that are in the test suite object. And then it prints a dot for each test, that, uh, or it prints a character for each test that is executed, in this case, uh, in this case, all these uh, all these tests uh, are okay, so it prints a dot. Um, it's, if a uh, test fails because insertion fails, it prints an F for failure. And if a test fails because of an error, for instance, you didn't catch an exception or a PHP error occurred, it prints an E for error. You can also do some, uh, have some uh, different outputs um, based on the names of your test methods. Um, you can get this test docs output, which is pretty interesting um, if you use your test to document your st software and to write an executable specification of your software. You can verify the specification uh, by doing something like this. Um, and now we come to the new unit. Sometime about two years ago, Michael Lively Jr., who works for Selling Stores in Las Vegas, uh, contacted me and he said, we are using uh, PHP Unit in all our, in, uh, for all our projects here at Selling Stores, but we need to make um, the writing of tests for databases much easier because it's so tedious to write the setup methods um, for, um, for database tests. We have to uh, truncate our tables when the test starts. We have to load um, some test data, and this is sometimes sometimes the test data is uh, very small, like only a couple of rows. Sometimes it's huge, several megabytes um, of dumps that need to be loaded. 
And okay, we have we have some solution for that, but it's not it doesn't it doesn't really scale, it could be much better. And hey, I found this uh, DB unit extension for J units. It's um, has proven uh, to be a good solution over the years. And I just got the okay from my company to port this to PHP and PHP unit. And would you be interested in posting this on phpunit.de and uh, accepting it into the next major release of PHP unit whenever I have it read? And this is the kind of email that you want to get as a developer of an open source code. So um, over a couple of months, uh, he implemented, he ported it. He at first um, used it inside the company, and then he was um, yeah, happy with it. Um, it worked uh, for him, for his company. He contributed to the code and continued to work on it in the open. So since his company mostly runs on MySQL, he only implemented dbunit initially for MySQL. Um, for some reason I'm going to touch on later, um, he also implemented an SQLite to that. SQLite uh, has been par a part of the PHP distribution uh, since PHP 5.0, so it's always available and it's, it's some really nice in uh, benefits um, when you're doing unit tests. Um, and um, some, one of my uh, consulting customers, when I was there for a week in, in the company, they said, okay, so this is all nice, um, this uh, concept of DB unit, but we don't use MySQL, we use Oracle. And um, is it possible to port it to Oracle? <coughs> I don't have the knowledge about Oracle, I have never worked with Oracle, but they said, okay, that's no problem. We have um, lots of engineers here who are very familiar with Oracle. And basically in the week that I was there, they ported DB unit um, to Oracle. We used it the rest of the week for, for writing tests, for working with it. And they contributed it back to PHP unit. And somebody else did it for PostgreSQL. So I think with the exception of MSSQL server, all the important uh, databases in the PHP domain are not supported by DB unit. Um, yeah, PHP unit extensions database test case is used um, to test database driven projects and it gives you, it, it has several features to support these tests. So it supports the, tear, uh, the set up and tear down steps of your tests. So it has a mechanism of um, data sets that you can initialize. So for instance, you can have an uh, XML file that is read and done converting to, um, it's, it's loaded into the database for each test, the database is cleared up between each test. So just because one test fails, doesn't mean that all other tests work on the database um, fail, because the database is cleaned up. It's put into a consistent state for each test. <coughs> and one way to define this known state of the database is to use an XML file. Is it actually using the database drivers or is it mocking the, the database objects to create those objects with database objects? Um, DB unit use it, DB unit itself uses um, PDO to talk to the database. And ben the benefit of these XML data files to specify um, the data sets that are used is that it's um, database independent. It knows how to load an XML file into MySQL. Your application that you test does not have to be written using PDO. It can still use MySQLi or X MySQL with MySQL and D or whatever. This is totally separate. You have that just have um, you, then you just have two um, open connections to the database. One for the application and one for the test. And the one for the test is only used to verify, um, for instance, is the database in the state that I want it to be in. Okay. But I have um, more information on the next slide. Um, yeah, it has the ability to export and import your database data to and from XML data sets. And it gives you additional assertion methods, like in the example that we had uh, before, you had, for instance, assert equals that compares two values. And dbunit gives you <coughs> assert table equals. And the assert table equals accepts two arguments 
of course, the one with the expected value and the actual value, but these values are not scaled up anymore. They can be, for instance, a PHP array that tells you an array of arrays that holds um, the rows and columns of the data set that you expect, or it can be an XML file, or it can be a table in a database. So, for instance, you decide, I don't want to use XML files, I just have um, um, a separate test database that has all the data, and you compare against that um, database. And if such, such an assertion fails, you get a div between the tables. Right? Just like PHP unit um, gives you a div if you compare PHP arrays or a text file that gives you a unit, unified div for Like I said before, the unit itself uses PDO to connect to the database on a test. The tested application doesn't have to use PHP itself for, for this to work. You can still use XMySQL, I, or whatever, which, uh, which of course makes sense if you build an application that's not um, designed for being shipped to other uh, scenarios that you want the application to work with Postgres well, for instance. But for DB unit, it makes sense to use PDO. So let's um, um, assume that um, we have enhanced the bank account class that we tested before to have persistence and to store the, uh, the bank account into a database, and now we want to run a test for that. <laughs> bank account DB tests now extends PHP unit extensions into the test, test, uh, database test case. Um, in the constructor, we use um, yeah, a utility method from PHP unit to connect to our database. The result of PHP unit utility PDO factory is a PDO object. The reason why um, we wrote this wrapper is that um, the DSN strings that PDO uses are not standardized yet between the individual databases. So the DSN for MySQL, for MySQL connection looks different than the DSN string for PostgreSQL connection. So we have a unified format that comes from pair. It has been around in the PHP community for eight years. Um, so it's uh, pretty common, and we can parse it, um, and it gives you the PDO object, and then we create um, the tables in the database. We have to implement a, me uh, a method called getConnection that returns uh, the PDO handle. This, um, gives you a bit of flexibility to, to, um, yeah, to customize this setup mechanism to, for instance, the PHP web application framework that you're using. So if you're using, I don't know, um, easy components and the easy components database component, you might not want to uh, use uh, the PDO directly in your application, but uh, you're going to use uh, the database component from PDO, which sits on top of PDO, so you create your ECC database object, and you ask, uh, and you store that, and then you ask the ECC database object, please give me my, um, please give me your uh, PDO object, and then you return that. So this is the reason why we split that uh, part there. Get connection, and then get data set, and this is um, the data set that will be loaded into the database before each test runs. And in this case, it's a flat XML data set. Um, the data set comes from an from XML file. There are two, actually two XML file formats supported by dbUnit. The same two formats, actually, that dbUnit for JUnit supports. So there are tools out there, for instance, um, that generate dbUnit XML files for you and makes it easier to maintain those. You can use all these tools that were initially written for the Java community with PHP units dbUnit because it's the same XML format. And in this case, we just use a flat XML data set, seeds.xml, and this is what um, this um, seeds.xml looks like in our example. It's a really, really simple XML format. Every um, element under the data set root element represents a row in the database. The element name represents um, the table that this row belongs to, and the XML attributes um, are the columns or the fields in the, uh, in the table. So that's pretty, pretty straightforward. 
then we can, uh, then we can continue writing our tests. We test a new account. We create a new bank account object, and the idea here is that we have made a mistake. Copy and paste only. PHP units copy and paste detection. It doesn't work on inquest files yet. Sorry about that. So we create a new bank account DB object, and uh, it, uh, yeah, it expects two arguments: the ID of the bank account and the database connection. So the database, so the bank account DB object knows to which database it needs to save itself after it has been initialized. And then we create um, a new um, data set that we expect to be in the, in the database after this operation. Again, it comes <laughs> from a uh, flat XML data uh, file. And then we use the search tables equal. And for the, just like before, with the assertion methods, the first argument is um, what we expect. And what we expect is the table account from the data set that we loaded before from the XML file. And the actual data set that we compare um, to the expected data set comes from the actual database. So we use get connection to get the current connection for this test. We create a data set from this uh, account table. And this is um, the XML file that represents the data set that we want uh, to find now in the database for the test to succeed. It's the same as before. It has one line at the bottom. <coughs> there is new. It has the bank account that we just created, and the balance is zero. So and we, if we find this uh, data set in the database, the test is uh, successful. I mentioned before, <laughs> Avoid testing, uh, or, or no? What I mentioned before as well is that it's, uh, you get a nice benefit if um, you use SQLI for your unit tests. And the reason is this: uh, when testing PHP code that uses PDO to connect to a database, like for instance reusable code um, that, you, that you've written using, using a database abstraction layer, like PDO itself, or EDC database from the EDC component that builds on top of PDO, or ZensDB from Zen Framework that build, sits on top of PDO. Uh, it makes sense to try to keep your SQL compatible with SQLite as much as possible, um, because the tests run way faster. And this is because SQLite has no server, so there's no inter-process communication. Um, and SQLite supports a complete in-memory database, so there is no disk I.O. And um, yeah, the, um, and these numbers of, in this benchmark come from the, unit, the, the test suite of um, the workflow engine component in the Easy Components. There are several hundred tests that ru um, run mostly against the database. And if I run them against MySQL, this takes 12 seconds and using 40% of CPU time. Um, if I run them against SQLite with a file on disk, it only takes 10 seconds, so it's slightly faster than before. I still have the I.O. overhead, but I don't have the inter-process <laughs> communication overhead anymore. And if I eliminate the I.O. overhead, because I'm not touching the disk for database operations at all by using SQLite in memory database. Uh, it gets down to 3.8 seconds, and the CPU is working all the time during these three seconds, so I can't get any faster than this. So I have only five minutes left, so I go quickly over some advanced one of the advanced concepts of PHP and supports. 
um, stops and mocks and how this relates or might relate in the future to um, DB Unit. Tests that only test one thing are more informative than tests uh, that a failure can occur from many um, sources. So I imagine you have written a unit test and during this unit test um, something, um, yeah, you, you speak to the database and the test fails. Now you do not know directly um, why this test fails. Does it fail because I have a bug in my PHP code? Does it fail because I have a bug in my SQL? Does it fail because my, the MySQL server is not available? Or whatever. Or whatever. So you want to isolate your unit tests from uh, external resources such as the database. And up until very recently, I think six months ago, there was no common vocabulary for these stocks and mocks. And so this was finally um, a, a book uh, published on unit testing that gave common, book, common names uh, about vocabulary for these concepts. So the easiest thing that you can have is a dummy, which is everything that is not the real object. And you can have a fake that is usable for testing but not for the real job. And the first thing that becomes really usable uh, is a stop. So you can have an object um, that you use inside your test, but this is not the object that you want to test, but you can test other objects that interact with this stop object. So for the duration of the test, you tell it, okay, I need an object that looks like this other object. And whenever I call a specific method on this object return, then uh, return this can set of data. And the next step is a spy, so the stop can, um, yeah, keep a book of, uh, on how it was called. And the real interesting part is uh, a mock, where you can say, okay, I have this, uh, this stop object, um, and I want to set expectations on this stop object, for instance, for the test to be successful, um, this method on this object has to be called with um, this argument for instance. And if you're more interested in, uh, in, uh, in stops and mocks, this is a book I mentioned, the X unit test patterns. Um, it gave the test community the same revolution, the same benefits uh, than Eric Gamma and his co authors did with their uh, design patterns book in the early 90s um, for reporting engineering. Um, finally, we have a common vocabulary that goes across the different testing frameworks because every testing framework used different names for the concepts in the past, and now we have a common vocabulary. Um, and PHP unit is mentioned in the book, so that's good. Um, a big example of how you can use this in PHP unit, for instance, you say get mock, give me an object that looks like the real thing, but it's not. You can configure the behavior um, from this object for the duration of the test, and then you can invite a test, and the idea is to extend this concept of mock objects um, to the database as an extension to DB unit that is very MySQL specific. Um, the reason here is that ideally the business logic and the persistence logic of a domain entity such as our bank account from the, uh, the example is modeled and implemented in separate classes. So if you have one class that has um, the business logic of your bank account and you have one class that knows how to load and save these bank account objects from the database. And then you can write tests that isolate these aspects from each other. <coughs> but if you have a legacy application that has not this separation of concerns by implementing um, these two aspects in different classes, you might want and you still want to test and isolate it, and MySQL proxy uh, should be able to help us there by communicating from PHP unit to MySQL proxy and say, okay, I'm starting a test now. And when I say the test has ended, for the test to be successful, um, this SQL query should have been sent to the server. And then you, then you can test more, <coughs> and that's uh, the closing point. Um, or you can say, um, uh, Giuseppe confused me, I forgot what I was to say. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your interest. Um, if you're more interested in um, PHP unit, more 
PHP focused aspects of PHP units such as software metrics, PHP unit, uh, code coverage, um, software metrics, PHP under control, and whatnot. Grab me sometime during the conference and here all week. Um, and we can sit down, um, have a look at that stuff and discuss. Thank you.